1997, when Venus was introduced, some fans rejected the idea of another turtle being present and then lost at the moment of their mutation. But this idea wasn't exactly original, whether it was intentional or not. The 1987 cartoon already introduced the concept when the turtles separated from another baby animal. Today I will be talking about the Fred Wolf cartoon version of Mondo Gecko. The character was created by Ryan Brown as a concept for the Playmates toy line and was released in 1990. However, the bio card described him as a human-turned-lizard, which was the basis for the character's adaptation into the Archie comics in 1991. But also, in 1991, Mondo was introduced in the fifth season of the cartoon. There, he was voiced by John Mariano. But as I mentioned before, introducing this character as a long-lost brother to the Turtles required changes to the origin story. But instead of simply adding the new information, the writers of the show, or more specifically, Gary Greenfield, decided to change the Turtles' origin to be more in line with the movie franchise. As you may remember, in the cartoon, Chet lost the Turtles and they ended up becoming Yoshi's pets. Sometime later, he would find them walking on the Purple Ooze. But in this version of the story, the Turtles were mutated right after Chet lost them. They weren't Yoshi's pets until after their mutation. As you can see in the clip of this new origin, the ooze was also green, to match the one in the movies and other media. But how did Mondo Gecko get lost, and how did the Turtles find him again? It was all thanks to Michelangelo's recurring dreams. They were pretty much nightmares that he couldn't remember after waking up. Sensing Michelangelo's suffering, Splinter hypnotized him to see what he was dreaming about. That was when he described their origin story again, adding the unexpected appearance of a baby gecko walking on the glowing ooze with them. So far, this wasn't a horrifying event, but then a human hand took the gecko away, separating them. Not knowing what to make out of that dream, Michelangelo went to find the place where they were mutated, looking for clues, but then he got distracted by a burglar alarm. Mikey tried to take care of some burglars, but he was quickly dispatched for some reason. One of these burglars was Mondo Gecko, who escaped into the sewers with the money. Ashamed by his performance, Michelangelo went after Mondo and found him skating the sewer pipes. He followed him to a dead end, and after seeing he was a mutated gecko, he realized his dream was real. But because the writer didn't seem to think too highly of Michelangelo, Mondo left him hanging. After freeing himself, Michelangelo followed his skate trail to a warehouse at the docks. There, he witnessed Gecko and two other thugs listening to their boss, Mr. X, speaking through a speaker. Mr. X ordered them to hijack an army truck containing a devastating new explosive device. This device was powerful enough to ask the military for a good amount of ransom money. Mikey tried to convince Mondo to be a better mutant, but he was trapped again and taken to Mr. X to decide his future. Michelangelo tried to tell his brothers where he was going, but the communication was ended early by one of the thugs. Gecko and company managed to hijack the truck successfully. This didn't escape the attention of April O'Neil, who was investigating this new explosive. After talking to the turtles, the brothers connected the dots on what was happening with Michelangelo. They took the blimp and followed Michelangelo's biogenetic code trace, or something. It's good that the turtles could find each other like this, it would make kidnapping them very hard. Something that, of course, will be forgotten for another plot later in this video. In any case, the thugs tried to kill him by letting the truck go down a very sinuous road. Despite having no drivers, the truck could turn on every corner. Fantastic stuff, isn't it? That is what I call high-tech. After finding out his mates tried to kill Michelangelo, Mondo went to his rescue and saved him from an explosion. However, convinced he was a bad mutant, he captured Mikey again and took him to the top of the mountain to see his boss. The turtles tracked Mikey again, confirming he didn't die in the explosion. At the top of the mountain, Mr. X asked for $5 billion in ransom money. After seeing each other face to face, Mikey recognized Mr. X as the man who stole the gecko in his dreams. Mr. X ordered Gecko to kill Mikey, but to stall him, Michelangelo asked for a last favor to give a pendant back to his mother. While doing this, Mikey hypnotized Gecko to make him remember their shared origin story. After finding this out, Gecko explained he was raised by Mr. X as a criminal, so he wasn't really a bad mutant. He was raised to be one. Furthermore, Gecko now saw Michelangelo as family. Mr. X, seeing how uncooperative Mondo was, sent the other thugs after Mikey, accidentally triggering the explosive device. Just when Mr. X was about to kill Mikey, the turtles came to his rescue and defeated everyone, deactivating the explosive device. 
Now free and convinced that he could be a good mutant, Mondo was ready to start a new life. Mikey convinced him to move back to the sewers to become their neighbor, something that was mostly forgotten for the entirety of the show's run, except for one other appearance in the 1993 episode Dirk Savage, Mutant Hunter, written by David Wise. In this seven-season episode, the Turtles were tracking Taka and Razar. These two characters were making their first appearance in the cartoon. They were adapted from the toys that were in turn adapted from the 1991 movie. Their origin happened off-camera after the Shredder unleashed some mutagen at the zoo. This created many new mutants. They traced Taka and Razar to a mall, but they ended up escaping, and the mall was destroyed. Back at the lair, the Turtles watched an eccentric millionaire on TV named Jay Howard, complaining about how the mutants were bringing down the economy. Convinced that the mutants were all evil, he hired a professional mutant hunter named Dirk Savage, a somewhat parody of Nick Fury from the Marvel comics. As part of his Down With Mutants campaign, he distributed bracelets to spread his cause among humans. According to April, this Dirk Savage character was a soldier of fortune who worked for different governments worldwide. This mercenary hunted down rebels, misfits, and other outcasts for money. The Turtles immediately experienced Dirk's effectiveness as he kidnapped Napoleon Bonifrog and Genghis Frog, who were visiting Central Park. Master Splinter realized Savage's hatred for mutants was rooted in ignorance, and he advised the Turtles to teach him that not all mutants were evil. Of course, this didn't work out. Savage kidnapped Leo and Mikey and took them to a Jay Howard, who was collecting mutants and putting bracelets on them to mind control them. Completely forgetting about how they tracked Mikey in the episode I discussed before, Donatello tried to find a way to track them, but then April interrupted them and urged them to visit her as she had crucial information about a Jay Howard. Irma discovered that Howard used to run a genetics lab that had to shut down after an accident. A J disappeared for over a year after that. After his return, he started working on his new tower building, which would be unveiled soon. The suspicious thing about this new tower was its amount of security, which made April think he was hiding something. Donnie and Raph decided to convince Mondo Gecko to act as bait for Dirk Savage, allowing them to track him to the location of the other kidnapped mutants. Savage successfully trapped Taka and Mondo and took them to a Jay Howard. That was when the Turtles discovered a Jay Howard was actually a mutant slug. Years ago, he was transformed in that genetics lab accident and now wanted mutants to master the human race. With this new evidence, Donnie and Raph decided to call Dirk Savage to meet them. The idea was to convince him that a Jay Howard was a bad guy, but their efforts were interrupted by Razar, who wanted his friend back. After the Turtles saved Dirk's life from Razar, he realized they were on the good side. They joined April and Irma at the Howard Building. Like many other humans, they quickly fell under the control of the mutant slug, thanks to his Down With Mutants bracelets. These bracelets were controlled by a transmitter in the tower, controlling humans across the city. Donnie and Raph took down the transmitter using the Turtle Blimp, freeing all humans. However, the rest of the mutants were still under his control. In the end, it was Dirk Savage who freed the mutants by destroying Howard's control over them. The final touch to take down his master plan was the total destruction of the Howard building. The Turtles and Dirk Savage ended on good terms, but we never saw him or Mondo ever again. This character was later adapted into other versions, like the IDW comics and the 2012 cartoon, but I will discuss those in future videos. If you are interested in an adaptation closer to the original concept by Ryan Brown, you can check out this other video about the Mondo Gecko from Archie Comics, which was a human turned gecko. Thanks for watching.